As Darwin sailed around the world, he stopped off at the Galapagos Islands. Here on those islands, he noticed there were 14 different varieties of finches. Little tiny bird with a little tiny beak. But the beak shapes were different. Now the Grants went there and studied them and said, wow, during dry years, the beak is a tenth of a millimeter thicker, and during wet years, it's a tenth of a millimeter thinner. But it always averages back out. A tenth of a millimeter, do you know how much that is? Not much. Darwin looked at the birds and said, you know what? I think all these birds had a common ancestor. I bet you're right, Charlie. It was a bird. <laughs> and then Charlie said, well, maybe this proves that birds and bananas are related. You say, oh, he never said that. Uh, he sure did. I knew you wouldn't believe me, so I brought his book. It's right here. Principles, I'm sorry, uh, The Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. On page 170, Darwin said, it's a truly wonderful fact that all animals and all plants throughout all time and space should be related to each other. Isn't he saying the birds and bananas are related? He sure is. This is a lie. What Charlie observed is what is sometimes called microevolution. Microevolution tells us dogs produce a variety of dogs. That's a fact. It happens, okay? And roses produce a variety of roses. Nobody argues about that. The question is, does it go any farther than that? You may get a big dog or a little dog, but you get a dog every time. And probably the dog, the wolf, and the coyote had a common ancestor. I wouldn't argue about that. We did the test this morning. Had a five-year-old girl. Said, okay, here we have a dog, a wolf, a coyote, and a banana. Which one is not like the others? She got it. The banana. We got college professors can't figure that out. Here's National Pornographic. A Geographic says, uh, the evolution of dogs from wolves. Well, duh. Nobody's arguing about that. Yeah, dogs came from wolves, Okay. The Bible says they bring forth after their kind. Ten times it says that in the first chapter. See, this word evolution has six meanings. We've been through this before, so I'm going to go through it kind of quickly. There's, first of all, cosmic evolution, Big Bang. Secondly, chemical evolution, where all the chemicals come from hydrogen. That's baloney. Thirdly, stellar evolution, where all the stars form from dust. You cannot get dust to condense into a solid star. Can't happen. There's Boyle's gas laws that drive it away, okay? Then... There's enough stars out there, though we can all have 11 trillion to ourselves. Then you have organic evolution, where life gets started from non-living material. And then macroevolution, where an animal changes to a different kind of animal. None of those have ever been observed. Number six, variations within the kinds, sometimes called microevolution. That one happens. The first five are religious. So whenever you discuss evolution, you have to define what you're talking about. If you're talking about number six, I'm with you. I agree that happens talking about the first five, that doesn't happen. That's something you believe happens, okay? Watch how they change the definition for the kids. They say, okay, boys and girls, evolution is change over time. Uh, is that really what they mean? Watch this carefully now. In other words, living things have changed over time. Wait, wait, wait. Are you going to skip over the first four? They just want to bypass the first four stages like it's not part of the theory? Well, then you don't have a coherent theory. Then they say, Evolution is defined as a change in species over time. Now they're down to what I believe in. I think species can change. I think you can get some really weird varieties of animals, but they're still the same kind, okay? This is a lie, kids. That's not really what they mean by evolution. They want to give you examples of number six and make you believe that the whole theory has been proven. Don't get brainwashed. 